Hi, I'm Tim, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up this, which is the Rio Link Duo 3V PoE Dual Lens Person Tracking Color Night Vision Security Camera. Now, I've already done an unboxing video of this, so in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get this set up by putting the SD card in and also accessing the camera through your network. So we'll hop onto the computer behind me and I'll show you how to do that. Then in a future video, I'll hopefully be able to show you it being installed. Now I'd recommend setting up these first and getting it configured before you actually install it, just to make sure that it's actually working. So let's get to this right now. So here we are with the RioLink Duo 3V POE Dual Lens Dome Security Camera. Now, what we're going to do first is I've left the plastic on, as you will see, just to protect the lens for the time being. So what we're going to do is insert a micro SD card, which I have here. This is a SanDisk Extreme 256 gigabyte micro SD card. And what we're going to do is insert the SD card into the micro SD card slot here. Now to get into this, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, which I have here. So you just unscrew two screws, just enough to release the cover. And then with a small flathead screwdriver, it's just easy to release the cover just in the recess there to bring out the cover, get access to the SD card slot underneath. So there we have the cover and that's all solid metal, by the way. And it has a black rubber seal around it to protect it from water ingress. So there we have the micro SD card slot. And next to it here is a little recessed hole where you would use the tool that's provided with the camera, which I showed you in the unboxing process. And you just put it in the hole there to reset the camera should you so wish. So the micro SD card slot goes in this way with the little notch to the right side here where there's a little notch and a little groove either side of that, and that goes in to the right side. And there we have the micro SD card, and it should just press in with your nail, and you'll hear a small click once it goes in, which means it's locked in place. So then what we do is put the cover back on to the slot, and then tighten up the two screws. So once you've done that, then what we can do is power on the device. Now here I've got a Cat6 Ethernet cable, which is already plugged in the other end of this cable into my network switch into one of the PoE or power over Ethernet ports. Now, as I've said, it doesn't require PoE plus or plus plus. So it's just the standard PoE, which is rated at 30 watts per port. So this then plugs into the socket here on the end of this cable, and then it should start to power itself on. So what we'll do at this stage now is remove the plastic cover, testing purposes, and I would recommend keeping this plastic cover to one side in case you ever need it again. It does have a little bit of adhesion on the back of it still, so you should st still be able to use it. So there's nothing to say or light anywhere on the device to say it's actually powered up. So you could just wait a minute or two and hopefully it should power itself on automatically. And then what we'll do is hop onto the computer screen, which I'll jump onto now and show you that, which we add it into the Rio Link application. So we'll get onto that right now. So here we are at the Rio Link website. And what you need to do, if you haven't already done so, is to download the RioLink application. Now, to find it on the RioLink website, you go to Support, Hover Over Download Center, and then you will see there's a submenu for App and Client. So click on App and Client. This will then take you to the section of their website where you can download the various versions of the application. So here we have one for Windows, which is for Windows 7 or later versions. And we also have a Mac version, an iOS version, and also the Android version 
of course, if you're using iOS or Android, you'll just download that from your normal Play Store or App Store, depending on which uh, operating system you're using. So I've already downloaded the Windows version here and I've already installed it on my PC. Um, I don't think I need to show you how to install it. It's just standard with every application and like other applications are. So you just download it, run the installer, and then you should get the RioLink application installed. So once you've done that, you can close the website. So we'll close this. And then what we'll do is open up the RioLink application. So you'll see on the screen that I've already opened up and gone into the RioLink application. So now I've already added cameras into the RioLink application, which I've previously added before. And this is what you'll see on screen for the two cameras, which I'm showing at the moment. However, the pictures are blanked out partly for security reasons. So what we need to do to add the new camera is at the left hand side, you'll see we've got device and a plus symbol next to it. So what we need to do is click on the plus symbol and this will bring up a pop up window and it's saying scan devices in LAN. So what we can do is just refresh this. So you'll see we've got a list of devices which it's detected on the network using their IP addresses. So if we scroll down, so either use your mouse to scroll down or use the scroll bar here at the right hand side, you'll see that we've got camera one appearing. So not CAMR01, which is this one here. This is one that I previously added. So we've got camera one and we've got the IP address 192.168.1.124, which is the one we're just adding now. So to add it into the application, all we need to do is just click the plus symbol next to the device you want to add. Now these devices here, the NVR, CAMR01 and also DBEL01 have already been added. So they will still appear because it's scanning the network for them. So even if they've been added, which you already have in this list and on the screen here with those pictures, it will still actually appear as if you want to add them. So you could actually click on them, but it will say they've already been added. So the one we're adding is camera one. So we'll click the plus symbol next to this. And then it's asking us to create a device password. So this is a device password for administration reasons. So please do make a note of it and don't forget the password at all. Otherwise you uh, won't be able to access your device without factory resetting it. So what I'll do is create a password in this password box here and confirm the password. And for the illegal login lockout, it's saying after a series of failed attempts within three minutes, your camera will be temporarily locked for a few minutes. Now, for the few minutes, I found that it actually locks them for about five minutes. So it will actually lock you out for five minutes. And then after which you can try and log in using a different password again. So I'll leave that enabled. So what we'll do is click next. And then it's asking us to give the camera a name. So in the name, it's got Rio Link Duo 3V PoE. Of course, you can rename it to camera one, camera two, so on or whichever name you like, but I'll leave it as Rio Link Duo 3V PoE for the time being and just click next. And it's saying initialization has finished. For more configurations, please go to the device settings to proceed. So we'll click finish. And as you will see, we've got the camera here and it's at a funny angle at the moment because it's just sat on my desk. So you will see my screen here and my workstation and partly uh, the edge of a curtain there as well. So it's facing up to the ceiling. All you need to do is look for your device at the left hand side. Here you'll see we've got Rio Link Duo 3V PoE and we've got a little gear or cog icon against it. So all we need to do is click this and then it will bring up this pop up window where you can configure the various options. So we'll just move it to the right slightly. And you'll see we've got here in the video screen, we've got the Rio Link logo. So if, for example, if you want to get rid of this watermark, the logo, all you do in this selection is for watermark, just move the slider to the left. And as you'll see, it's now Rio Link has now gone from the video feed. So for the camera name, for example, it's at the bottom right here at the moment. So let's put this to the top left and you'll see we've got the name now moved here. And then we've got the date and the time there. 
which is actually incorrect at the moment. So what we'll do is go to the next option. So we'll go to stream. And as you can see, we've got the high stream settings, which is the clear option. So here you'll see on the video screen, when I hover over the bottom, you'll see we've got various options. Now here it's set to low. So if we want to change it, we can change it to balance. So you can have it as low or mid for the video resolution unless you have it full screen. If you have it full screen, then you can change it to high resolution as stated here in the settings. So it would change the resolution to high by 7,680 by 2,160. Then for motion detection, you'll see we've got sensitivity options here. We've got alarm delay, object size and non-detection zone. So what we'll do is set up a non-detection zone. So to do this, all you do is hover over the picture, hold your mouse button down, and then gray out the selection there where you don't want the detections to occur, for example, on the picture. So anyone, for example, walking in this gray area here will not trigger a detection. But to uh, clear this, we'll just reset it by clicking the erase all button, which is this one here. And then we'll go back and then what we can do is select light, for example. So infrared lights, they are set to automatic at the moment. So we we'll leave that as it is. Go back, spotlight, of course, the spotlight, you can change the brightness. So it will light up here, night smart mode, which is on. So when it detects a person, vehicle or animal, it will automatically turn on the spotlight. So it would light up the picture in full colour as you will see in this demonstration here, or if the spotlight's off, it will just be dark and black and white. So then we can select sounds. So you can have, for example, do you want to record audio and it's disabled by default. I tend not to record audio, but it doesn't really matter whether you choose to or not. But obviously, if there's rules and regulations to either record or not record, depending on what the rules and regulations are about recording uh, public footage on your security cameras. So then we can go to the info tab and here you'll see we've got the model number, build number, config version, firmware versions and so on. Then we can select surveillance and for record we've got various recording options. So we can enable record, disable it, pre-motion timers, second post-motion timers as well, email notifications, FTP settings, siren for example, push notifications and then we've got network. So we can click on network information. Here it's given us the IP address of the camera, the subnet, gateway and so on and the DNS servers. You can also click network settings here. So you can set it to a static IP address should you so wish but mine's set to DHCP and that is the default option from the factory. So we'll click back and back again and then we'll go to advanced and here you'll see we've got UPnP options, enable UID, DDNS, NTP settings. So what we can do is change the NTP server. So in this one I'll use zero.uk.pool.ntp.org and click save and then we've got server settings. So we've got basic you can set RTMP ports, HTTP, RTSP and ONVIF. So to enable ONVIF, you have to enable RTSP as well. So click confirm and then you'll be able to enable ONVIF. So there you can have this integrated then into, into Home Assistant with the ONVIF and other camera applications as well. So we'll just go back out of that for the time being or once you've done these settings, by the way, make sure you click save, otherwise it won't save the settings. So we'll just go back out. Then we can select server settings, which we've just been into, and then HTTP settings. So you can have browser certificates if you want, key files and so on. Storage, you'll see we've got the SD card. So this is the SD card. So here we've got an exclamation mark, means it's not formatted or not mounted. So before you can use the SD card in the camera, you need to format it. So to format it, all you need to do is click format and then click confirm and then wait for it to format the SD card. 
which should take just uh, a minute or two. And as you'll see at the left hand side, it's now trying to reconnect to the camera after formatting the SD card. So we just wait for it to reconnect automatically. And as you'll see, it's now say we are linked Duo 3V PoE connected. So what we'll do is click the gear icon and then we'll go to storage again. And you'll see we've now got the SD card, which is showing us 238 gigabytes of storage and no gigabytes used. You can click this if you want the arrow and you'll see that it's now saying it's got a tick next to formatted and mounted. So it means it's now working with the SD card to record alerts and detection. So what we can also do now is click system, share device. So for example, you can share this device with other users. Login settings, you'll see that we've got illegal login lockout and change password. So we'll just cancel that. We've already set up a password, if you recall, when we first connected the camera. So we can select date and time. So here we can actually change the date. So update the date there. And the date format is day, day, month, month and year, uh, 24 hour time. And then for the network time protocol, we can just click synchronize. And for the date and time, you have to set your region as well. So to do this, click setup, change the time zone. So for example, I'll select GMT plus zero, auto synchronize and click confirm. And then all we need to do is click confirm again. And then you'll now see that the time has been updated to the correct time of 1353. So then we can go to maintenance at the bottom and check for firmware updates. Now it's automatically set to reboot the camera every Sunday. However, I choose not to auto reboot the devices as I found that they've not needed to be auto rebooted. So I'll disable this and then select firmware update. Then what we could do is check for latest version and you'll see we've got the most current version available. So it's automatically set to update the firmware automatically. So I like to do these updates manually when I choose. So I would disable this option here. However, you can leave it as automatic if you so wish. So to go back, we just click the arrow and then that's it for all the options in the camera. You can go in depth into more options if you wish, but uh, rather than make this video too long, you will see that we've now got uh, the camera set up. So we'll close this settings window and then bring up the camera full screen by clicking on the window here. And you'll now see that we've got the camera so if I tilt the camera, you'll see that and turn it around the correct way. You'll see that we've got me myself on camera so we can zoom in. There is a bit of a delay between the camera itself and me recording this video using my normal system. So that's how you set up and add the Rio Link camera into the Rio Link application. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it useful and a quick tour of all the settings for the camera as well. And keep a lookout as more videos are coming again soon. So take care and bye for now.